Welcome to your next video on radicals. Today's lesson is going to focus on how we multiply radicals together. When we're multiplying radicals, there's one major property that you need to be aware of. And that property is that the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of a times b. So what this means is that if you have separate radicals, you can put them together by multiplying. Or if you have a radical, you can also pull it apart by just separating it into the two pieces. When we look at a multiplying problem, there are two options or two choices that you have to make as far as how to simplify it. So option one is to multiply and then simplify. Um, what that means is that you would multiply the numbers inside the radicals first and then break them down. So basically you would start with two separate square roots, you would multiply them together, and then whatever number you got under the radical, you would break that down. The second option is to simplify first and then multiply. So that's just going to switch up the order. First you're going to break down the radical and then you're going to put them back together. So this may seem a little bit confusing just to look at in words. So let's take a look at a few examples. Um, your directions would just say to simplify. And what that means is we have to get everything broken down as far as we can go. Now, if you look at problem number one, um, you could do it either way. You could multiply first or you could simplify first. But if you notice underneath the radicals, we have two numbers that are rather large. So if we were to multiply them, we would get another rather large number. But the other thing that I really want you to note is that those are perfect squares. And so I think for this one, it makes sense to simplify first. So if we look at 49, we can break that down to 7 and 7, which hopefully you wouldn't even have to do that. You might just recognize that that's a perfect square. So the square root of 49 is 7. We don't have anything left inside the radical. Likewise, 81 can get broken down to 9 times 9, which means it is a perfect square. So the square root of 81 is 9. And in between those radicals, we have the time sign. And so now we just have to multiply the result. So notice we simplified first, and then we multiplied, which was option 1. Was it option 2? I might be wrong on that. It was option 2. All right. Um, example 2. Um, this one, 50 is not a perfect square. 6 is not a perfect square. So I think on this one, we're going to do option one. We're going to start by multiplying. So we're basically going to put those radicals together. So we're going to make one big radical. And 50 times 6 is 300. And then we're going to break down 300. Um, hopefully you recognize that 3 times 100 easily goes in. The 3 can't get broken down any further, but the 100 can. That would be 10 times 10. And then you can break the tens down into 2 times 5 and 2 times 5. And when we start to look for pairs, we see that we have a pair of 2s. And we have a pair of 5s. So we're going to bring out a 2. And we're going to bring out a 5. And then we had our 3 left over that wasn't paired up at all. So we're going to put that in the square root. And it's going to be 2 times 5 on the outside, which is 10. And then we've got to 3. Okay, you can't go wrong however you do it. You just have to realize that your final answer always needs to be in simplified form. Okay, example number 3, we have uh, two parts to deal with here. We've got the outside numbers and the inside numbers. Um, we can only multiply outside numbers with outside numbers. So let's actually start with that. So let's multiply the 2 times the 3. So that'll give us 6. And then since 8 and 3, we really don't have the option um, to simplify 3, since that's a prime number. So let's go ahead and multiply those together. So we're going to take the square root of 8 times the square root of 3 to get the square root of 24. Now we're basically back to a simplifying problem like we did a few days ago. We're going to break down 24. You might pick 4 and 6, and then break the 4 down to 2 and 2, and the 6 down to 2 and 3. You'll note that you have a pair of 2s that are going to come outside. So we have the 6 outside already. We're going to bring out a 2. And then underneath the radical, we have the 2 and the 3. And now we just have to multiply those pieces. So on the outside, we have 12. And on the inside, we have 6. 
So our final simplified answer is 12 square root 6. Number four looks a little bit different. Um, first, I'd like you to note that we have parentheses in this problem. And so that takes us back to the distributive property. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that 2 square root of 2, and we're going to distribute it to both of the terms inside the parentheses. So we're going to multiply it by the 3, and then we're also going to multiply it by the square root of 20. So if we go ahead and do this, um, the 2 and the 3 are both outside numbers, so those can go together. And then there's no inside number, so it's just going to be the square root of 2. When we distribute the 2 square root of 2 to the square root of 20, um, we've got 2 times that negative 1 out in front, so that'll give us a negative 2. And then inside the radical, those inside numbers will get multiplied, so we've got 2 times 20, which is 40. Now we have to work on breaking down the radicals. And if you start at the beginning, 6 square root of 2, we can't break down the square root of 2 at all. So that piece is just going to come down and be a part of our final answer. However, the second piece, the square root of 40, can get broken down. So let's go with 4 and 10. And then let's break down the 4 to 2 and 2, and break down the 10 to 2 and 5. So we note that we've got a pair of 2s. So here, let's start writing our, our whole answer here. We're going to bring down 6 square root of 2. We've got the minus 2 out front. We're bringing out another 2 to join it. And then inside, we're leaving those single numbers that are underlined, and we're going to have 2 times 5. And then we just have to clean it up a little bit. The 6 square root of 2 isn't going to change. Outside, we've got a minus 4. And then inside, we have a square root of 10. Now, we just finished up a lesson on adding and subtracting. However, this answer has to stay like it is because the square root of 2 and the square root of 10 are not considered like terms. So it is okay to have more than one term in your answer. This concludes your video on multiplying, and you may now begin your practice.